My name is Salim Guerrera, and my position is uh, the Vice President of Research and Development with Thor Energy, and the interest is in the development and testing and licensing of light water reactor-based thorium fuels. I believe that thorium energy can provide a platform for a more sustainable uh, nuclear fuel cycle in the future, and we believe that the introduction of thorium needs to take place in conventional light water reactor platforms, and that's with the introduction of particular niche fuels into the fuel cycle, um, such as a uh, thorium mix oxide fuel to replace a MOX fuel as a uh, accident tolerant variant of that fuel. Our company was started by a, a mother company named Scottex, uh, Scandinavian Advanced Technology, and they're interested in commercializing um, concepts that are related to green energy production and advanced materials. And we started as a feasibility study within that company and then expanded into a, comp a company ourselves. And the, the idea was, can thorium play a role in the near to medium term uh, nuclear industry? And the conclusion to that was, we believe it can in particular niche applications. I believe our technology is unique because it brings thorium into the world before a lot of other technologies are allowed are able to accomplish that. Um, we're working with conventional light water reactors, um, platforms that have been already developed, and our techn technology involves uh, uh, sustainable and available uh, manufacturing technologies. Um, it essentially, it's a new product, but originated from the conventional uh, industry right now so it's it doesn't the time to, to the time to market is essentially pretty um, it's essentially much less than what it is for these more nirvana applications of thorium such as the molten salt reactor or the accelerator driven systems essentially I would say our goals are just to license thorium thorium based fuels and to become a producer of technology that enables um, safer operations and commercial reactors these days. Small company, I believe we have a lot of challenges um, simply because the industry is not focused on small companies. Um, so the, the licensing body and the licensing platform aren't able to, to uh, handle or deal with small companies. Uh, so our largest issue is that and also the issue of funding. Um, we have enough funding to complete all of our research but then there's a period of funding um, in which you need to have for licensing applications and that is still of course up in the air. Um, we hope to attract industrial partners as well to, and maybe uh, national laboratories to help co-fund those and to reach our final goals in the future. We gain general support just based on the premise that we're utilizing a new technology that offers increased safety. Um, so I believe the public will be more receptive, not completely receptive, but more receptive to the application of thorium in light water reactors if they understand that it's a, it's a safe alternative. So the safety features, um, at least in this post-Fukushima era, are, are quite um, evident. In, in Fukushima, we had um, oxidation of material, the cladding in the fuel, and that led to hydrogen release and then explosions. We offer an alternative uh, thorium-based uh, application, which is oxidation resistant, uh, so we don't have to worry about exothermic reactions and hydrogen release, um, so that under a severe accident scenario, we essentially wouldn't uh, you know, if, if Fukushima had thorium fuels, the severe accident scenario wouldn't have been nearly as catastrophic as it was. Under the accident at Fukushima, you had temperatures that went, uh, that got really high. And what happens then is materials within the reactor, such as the cladding or the fuel, uh, begins to melt. And once it melts, it becomes in contact with the water and high temperature and water, um, you oxidize the material, whether it was the uranium 
oxidize it, which means you strip oxygen away from the water, leaving hydrogen, and the hydrogen um, turns into gas. And underneath, during the Fukushima accident, they had to vent the gas into the containment facility, and then the gas caused explosion in the containment facility. And to mitigate that or to prevent that, we have an oxidation resistant material. Um, essentially, there's oxidation states for thorium and for uranium. Uh, thorium has a single oxidation state, which is the plus four that you find in thorium dioxide. Uranium dioxide has multiple oxidation states. It has the plus four, but it also has the plus six. So under certain circumstances, the chemistry changes, and you go from uh, uranium dioxide to a different, fo different oxide form in which you pull oxygen from the water, which is H2O, leaving hydrogen to remain. Our application, we have two different fuels. Um, one is a thorium additive fuel, and this is, a, this is just a, a fuel to replace gadolinium, which is a, what we call a burnable absorber. Um, so it, most reactors, most pressurized uh, heavy water reactors use gadolinium. So that is for any market, essentially, that has pressurized water reactors. Uh, the thorium mix oxide fuel is a combination of plutonium and thorium. So that it's, has its applications in um, countries that are concerned with plutonium disposition. That would be the United States or the UK or France or, um, and there's just a few others. Not, not many countries are concerned with plutonium disposition, but that does have a smaller market. But I think in 10 years time, well, to be realistic, in 10 years time, I hope that we have irradiated in a commercial reactor as a lead test assembly. And I think in 10 years time, it's possible for for the licensing of this application to be almost complete, um, which then we could go into full commercial applications in light water reactors. Um, essentially, I believe you know there's going to be a pretty big push to change from the standard fuels to accident tolerant fuels um, and claddings as well. Uh, uranium has a direction it's going in, but mixed oxide fuels um, right now have no direction. And I believe that thorium mixed oxide fuels and thorium energies technology is the technology that will get us there. I guess my final message would be that uh, you know, thorium energy is, is an institution that relies on the cooperation um, of, of many institutions um, worldwide. Uh, we have an international consortium that helps co-fund the project as well. And so we're interested in expanding that consortium and getting um, you know, more help, more collaboration from the outside world. Uh, we're not necessarily a company that wants to hoard you know, the data or the rights or anything. To ourselves, we're kind of more interested in a in a uh, long term perspective. Since this is a, I mean, we've we've poured money into it, but we understand it's not a near term return. Um, we'd like to invite others into the consortium, and the consortium is open for others who would like to participate or um, who have you know something to offer or at least interested in in joining this uh, program. So.